My first myth today came via email, and it asked about the truth behind the rumor that back in October of 1969, Frank Zappa played live with Pink Floyd. When it comes to the pioneering musical minds of the late 60s and early 70s, Frank Zappa and Pink Floyd are definitely on that list, if not at the top of it. But to have them playing live together sounds like little more than fanboy wishful thinking. Except it's not. It's completely true, it happened, and it's pretty easy to find the audio. The festival took place in Belgium over the course of two days, and obviously by this point, Sid Barrett has already left Pink Floyd. The band played a number of songs that night, but when they started playing Interstellar Overdrive, Frank Zappa came on stage and jammed on guitar with them. For me, I wouldn't go so far as using the term that he played with them, because he was only up there for a couple of minutes, it was more like a jam. But anyway, you slice it, Pink Floyd and Frank Zappa absolutely shared the same musical stage, and if you head over to YouTube, it's pretty easy to find. The second myth today is an old one, and it raises the question of whether or not Maury Amsterdam actually wrote the song rum and coca-cola. No doubt best known for his career in comedy, this song topped the charts a number of times for the Andrews sisters in 1945. And Maury Amsterdam did and does hold the copyrights to that song. However, the song was actually written many years earlier by a calypso artist named Lord Invader in Trinidad. And while Maury Amsterdam was on vacation on the island, he heard the song, added a couple lines for himself, and then secured the copyrights for it. After it became a huge hit, the real writers behind the song successfully sued Maury Amsterdam for royalties, but he was able to retain the copyrights to it. So while he did add a few lines of his own, the core of the song and the entire melody was nothing more than clever musical theft on the part of Maury Amsterdam. My final myth today came in via my Facebook page, and it raised the question of whether or not the Boomtown Rats song, I Don't Like Mondays, was actually inspired by a mass shooting. Like a number of other songs, this has a very dark origin because that story is completely true. Released in the summer of 79, Bob Geldof said that he got the idea for the song after hearing a radio interview with Barbara Ann Spencer. For those unaware, a couple months earlier, Barbara Ann Spencer opened open fire on a school playground outside of San Diego. And when she gave her explanation for the act, she said, I don't like Mondays. This sort of livens it up a bit. The song was originally intended only to be a B-side, but after live audiences really dug it, they made it a formal single release. And it topped the charts for a number of weeks throughout the summer of 79. Dark and disturbing, yes, but also 100% true. So those are my myths for this week. Be sure to check back here every Friday as I delve into some of the coolest stories in music history. If you've got a myth you want me to explore, you can email me at thedailyguru at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook right here, and I'll see you guys again next time. Oh!